intro orientation and our agenda today schedule. Uh, I'll be doing the first one, Rise and Obligation and Sexual Harassment on Campus. And then Ruby will do the uh, introduction of Italian City. Okay, uh, Ruby's not here yet, but she will. Okay. And in the afternoon, we have, uh, the, we have the English program director from uh, New Taipei City, Xinxi Elementary School. Uh, now, she, uh, this director, she's, uh, she's uh, very prominent in her study with the co uh, collaborative teaching. Okay? So she's going to be here today and, and, and talk to you guys about that. And then we'll have Gabriel uh, sharing some experience of his time in uh, English Village. And the last week I will be uh, doing a presentation on learning through singing. Uh, I, I have been a teacher myself for quite a long time, almost 10 years. So, so I thought that you guys might benefit from my experience you know, when I taught the kids how to learn English songs. Now, so it's our agenda today. And I'll begin with rights and obligations for foreign teachers. Now, uh, now that's most of you I have you know, heard this already, or you are probably familiar with the subjects. But I hope that by uh, telling this again, you can be more familiarized and know that uh, exactly what kind of documents you need for each you know, documentation. Uh, okay, so from work permit to ARC. Now, new teachers, you probably aren't aware that the process uh, of obtaining your ARC is through work permit, and most of the teachers will enter the country without a visa because, you know, uh, because they can you know, with an ND visa. And then we'll help you change, change that to visitor visa at the Council of Affairs. At that time, at the same time, when they change it to your, when they uh, get your visitor visa, when they process that, they will also change that to resident visa, which will allow us to do the next stop. That is to go to immigration and get your ARC, any resident certificate, okay? So that's the, the process. And right now, for new teachers, your process probably here at the visitor visa part. Okay, and uh, most teachers will be getting their visas uh, this week, okay, around Thursday or Friday. Now, for applications of APRC, now for, for teachers who've been in Taiwan for a long time, APRC is a very, uh, is a very uh, good thing to have because it allows you to stay in Taiwan even without an employer. Okay, now, so you must have worked in Taiwan for five years, meaning only a 12 month work permit for five years long and you must have no criminal records during the time of stay in Taiwan. And you must be in good health condition. The required documents include ARC, APRC application, passport, physical record within six months, and diplomas and other professional certificates. Now, you must remain in Taiwan for more than 183 days per year once you have the APRC. Question on that. Yeah. It's non-consecutive, right? Uh, within the calendar year. Yeah, within the calendar year, I'm afraid. Yeah. 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 So, wait a minute, so if we get our ERC like tomorrow and we want to go to, say, Kuala Lumpur on the uh, Dragon Boat Festival, mm -hmm. that will affect our taxes or something like that? APRC? No, ARC. ARC, no, you won't. Okay, no, you won't. You already have your ARC. You can. You can allow to, you're allowed to leave Taiwan, okay? But you mustn't, like, because you have an ARC, that means you're employed, right? So you have a job in Taiwan. It's impossible for you to stay. Now, outside Taiwan for that law, okay? Because you have a contract to fulfill. Now, and uh, also another way to acquire something similar to APRC will be a marriage to a Taiwanese person, okay? And so, just a thought. <laughs> okay, and uh, ARC extensions. Hey, it was worth asking. <laughs> huh? Uh, don't, don't forget to be eligible for an APRC, you need to have a, uh, a continuously applicable uh, visa for that entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, similar to what I said about uh, the like the continue like the whole coverage, the whole year coverage is work permit. Okay, S similar things. Okay, you like what Joshua said. <clears throat> your visa has to yeah for five years, right? Yeah, and it's a very difficult process, and uh, a lot of people like for I know. In New Taipei City, there were only a few teachers who were qualified with APRC because you got to be very depth, be very careful with your schedule, okay? Because you know they don't tend to hand out APRC very easily. Now, um, it must be applied 30 days before ARC expiry date, and each extension can be up to six months. Um, can be, but not all the time because I know Eric, uh, his extension was only up to uh, February 9 for some reason. Uh, and the required documents are ARC passport, two inch pictures, a letter stating purpose of extension, and a relief letter provided by a current employer. This 
Only in the way if you are fired or if you leave the job, if you leave your uh, previous contract, okay, and then you you wanted to stay stay in Taiwan for the you want to get an ARC pension, then you will have to get a, a leave letter from your last employer. And uh, it's usually free within a year since it's issue date or one thousand eighty annual fee. Okay, it's, if it is still within the the the, the year since the, the first issue date, then it's free. But if it is like the end of your uh, ARC, usually they will they will say you have to pay one thousand extra. Or they will say that next time when you come with a new employer with your ARC, then you have to pay one thousand to renew the annual fee. Uh, for more information, there's the number for the immigration hotline and. Important places to know, Bureau of Consular Affairs, this is in Taipei, in uh, Jinan, Jinan Road. Okay, Jinan Road. On Jinan Road, sorry. Workforce Development Agency. Uh, well, this this uh, organization has like offices everywhere, so uh, you can even find one in Taipei. And Immigration Office, same. Uh, local Police Department, uh, this is for, for, uh, for the police clearance check that you do every year. Now, and National Health Insurance. Uh, Taiwan offers with and employment, Taiwan offers full package for everyone. Employees 30%, employer 70%. Okay, that means the, the, the amount of money they have to pay for. You pay for 30%, employer pay for 70%. But it doesn't really show on your on your on the that your uh, salary received. So you don't see how much your employer is paying. You only see the part that you pay, which is 30%. And uh, and you are allowed to use your health insurance in most uh, almost all the hospitals in Taiwan, teaching hospital, local hospital clinics, Chinese doctors, uh, some, I know some don't take the, the national health insurance, but I think most, not, nowadays, most of them do, okay? Uh, unless it's, uh, you know, it's some of those, you know, secret Chinese chiropractor thing that probably will take the national health insurance. Uh, and uh, most doctors speak English, you know, to a degree, and, uh, you must have ARC, okay? If you don't have ARC, let's say if you, right now, the new teachers, they have their visa, they, they offer the job already, they have their work permit, they don't have their ARC yet. And during this time, if they want to visit the hospital, uh, the fee you must pay for your, you must pay yourself right now. But you keep the receipt, you must keep the receipt. And then you can, uh, we will help you get the receipts to the National Health Insurance, okay? And uh, you'll get a refund for the time period, okay? And the labor insurance, uh, on your paycheck, you, you should be, every month you should be taking about, maybe about 14,000 off for the insurance. Uh, that's combination of labor insurance and health insurance. And labor insurance, uh, for one thing that some teachers, last year we had a teacher who was over 60 years old, then he wasn't qualified for labor insurance, so we had to uh, get another additional insurance for him. So for teachers for older than 60 years old, you're not, uh, eligible for labor insurance, okay? And uh, the labor insurance, the fee is 20% by yourself, 70% by the school, and 10 percent by the government. And the coverage includes childbirth subsidy, commuter's protection, accident insurance during work, and also, well, this comes with the work permit, so work permit is the you know, requirement. And uh, driver license. Uh, some teachers ask me about getting a scooter license. Now, scooter license, unfortunately, uh, you cannot use your uh, driver license in the states or in your country and, and get changed into a scooter license. You will have to take the test. Okay? There is an English version of the road test and uh, and, uh, and a written test. Okay? There uh, and there are also uh, uh, handouts, downloadable uh, downloadable handouts on the internet for you to take the before you take the test. And you have to go to the motor motor vehicle department. Uh, to, to take the test yourself, okay, and uh, and uh, pass the scooter, you know, road test. Now, I wasn't a very good s scooter rider when I first began. I took the test four times, so, <laughs> all right. It was a little bit hard for me at, at the first time. When I was there, I, I never ridden the scooter before. I was told it was like riding a bicycle, and <laughs> the first test was you have to hold the scooter and uh, pass this about that distance, but you have to pass it longer than six seconds. So you gotta ride it really slowly mm, over there. And I didn't know, so I fell right there on the first test. So, you know, something, if you want to get a school license, it, it is a, a very convenient way to travel in Taiwan. Now, and, uh, 
but it's also a little bit dangerous, like I said, scooter. We yeah, we've noticed. Have, yeah, we said car is like metal wrapped around meat, but scooter is meat wrapped around metal. Okay. So, uh, and so, but for a car, uh, for a car, you can convert your international driving license to a local one. Okay. And and most of all, and most importantly, you have to. This is this is mandatory. You have, if you buy a car, if you own a car or a scooter, you have to have liability insurance. Okay. This is required by Taiwan. You have to buy one. Next question. Sorry. Yeah. Convert international one to local one. What of ours is expired? And we you have to get a renewed in the states and then come back to Taiwan. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I had one too. It was it was expired too. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, you're talking about an international license or a license from abroad? Uh, usually you will have to get your license. Let's say when I was in the states, I had a I had a driver license. I had to go to uh, uh, this Taipei liaison office in uh, Atlanta to change that into an international driver license. Right, what about the Filipino driver's license? Can I convert that to a Taiwanese license? I think so. I think it's. Uh, we'll have to. I'll call up the motor vehicle department no, for you and see if they, they should be able now to what accept I one. Is the Philippines does not reissue a card right now. They issue. A, they take your card plus a, a paper document. Is now your. Is it valid though? Still. Okay, then it should be no problem. But I think they might ask you to change that into an international driver license in the Philippines first. Probably. You know, it's, yeah, the, probably. it's probably problematic. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll call them up for you. Hello. Hello. That's weird. Not working. Okay, next one is tax for new teachers. This is important. Uh, okay, so... When foreign teachers enter Taiwan, before they've stayed in Taiwan for 183 days, their tax will be 18%. And that 18% will be, uh, uh, will be uh, for example, like if you are a bachelor, your base salary is 62,720, you will have to plus 7,000. Because 2,000 is your punctuality bonus, and 5,000 is your housing allowance. So together, the, the actual amount is 69,220. That amount of money times 18% is your tax every month. And, uh, but once you stay in Taiwan for 183 days, then uh, your then your tax will be five percent so, uh, from there on, and it's traceable back to the the, the the that within that year, okay? You know, you work in Taiwan. So for new teachers, uh, once you stay in Taiwan for 183 days, uh, the previous month, so you've been paying 18 percent, you can get a tax return next year, okay? In May. And uh, this year they changed the law a little bit, so when we went to the taxation office, now they enforce very strictly. They're saying that if you are a teacher renewing a contract, we do not offer you uh, a, a, a check, okay, for you to cash the, the tax return early. You have to wait with, like everybody else until May. This is what they said to us. They said that if you want to prove that uh, you're not renewing teacher, you have to offer like a ticket, an airplane ticket receipt, or a leave letter by the current, by the last employer, only then they will issue you a, a check, okay? So uh, last year we had a problem with this because before they were, you know, we were, we were able to get checks from the taxation office, yeah? Is that 183 is 83 days consecutive to? No, it's so within the year, yeah, okay. yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was curious about that because last year I arrived in February, went to Hong Kong in June for Dragon Boat Festival, and my tax rate never changed. They always kept taking the same amount. So. That's weird because uh, when did you come back? When did you come back? Um, June 8th, and then I went back to the U.S. for three weeks. Oh, ago. then probably the days in Taiwan, it wasn't 183 days. 183 is a, three days. Ago. About six months, right? Did you stay in Taiwan for about six months? Well, I went back to America in July for three weeks, so uh -huh. I guess not. Okay, if, if not, then it's still 18%. Okay, they do, like, if you leave Taiwan and come back, it's okay. They will still count the days that you're, you know, they will just deduct the days you're, you know, in another country and then continue. Okay, but once past December, it's a new beginning again, okay? Now, uh, so the withholding vouchers is what you need for the for the tax, okay? Same with everybody. 
Okay, and it's withholding vouchers. Every school has a different calendar for, for the withholding vouchers. Uh, for example, some some uh, bookkeepers like maybe Chongli's bookkeeper will give you the withholding vouchers early, but some bookkeepers will be like, uh, well, no, we won't give it to you until the 28th or the 27th, something like that. So it really depends on the, each school's you know, what what their rules is, yeah, what their system is. Okay, um, so withholding vouchers. Okay, and. Uh, and the Ministry of Finance and the District of Taxation Office usually go to get your tax return, uh, to get to file your tax. Okay, you don't have to go there personally. We can do it for you if you sign the power of attorney. Next one. Obligations. Uh, no outside word, meaning that you are uh, not allowed to teach at Hess after the school is over. Okay. Uh, because in the past they had teachers we call it at cram schools after the you know after the, they finish the job here okay because they want to earn some money but that's not allowed okay because they they feel that it's making the teacher it's it's um, it's gonna cause an effect on the teacher's performance at school so they don't want that and the uh, launch at school that this also depends on like happy day you probably have to no, stay on campus for your lunch. And uh, for which I remember, there's not really not much places around school to eat that, right? Yeah, so we probably have to stay at school too. Now, uh, immigration, if you change, the, change your residence, you need to report to immigration, okay? I think within a certain day, I think it was about 12 or 15 days, you must go to immigration and change your ARC, update your address. Because if you don't, they will find you for each day that you didn't report. Okay, so you must remember. And I remember the fine is uh, quite heavy. It's about maybe a thousand each day or something. Yeah. So, okay, make sure that you remember that. So, uh, and health check and background check, this is required. You know that for new teachers, you need a collection of three documents. Work permit, health check, and, and uh, the proof of background check. And all three documents have to be hard copies. Okay? And, uh, and you try not to be late, okay, or leave work, because uh, if you do that more than five times, it's gonna affect your uh, evaluation, your monthly evaluation. And don't hang out with students after school, even though it's cool, but you know, don't do that, it's against the school regulation. And of course, fornication with the students is strictly prohibited. And, uh, other obligations, okay, if you need to apply for a leave, like if you're sick, if you're sick, remember, uh, on the, in the morning, just call your coordinators and tell them that, okay, and they'll help you out with it. But if you have a personal leave, that, then it's, uh, I think the school wants you to apply it a week before, right? It's the school's policy, a week before, okay? And uh, contacts, you all know the coordinators, family from Chongli, can I, can you guys stand up when I call your name? Yeah, family. Uh, that's who are from Chongi, and Roy, that's from Wei Chong, and Daisy, that's from Kathy, okay? Thank you. And, uh, and for our, for the first contact, we have Ruby, who is, oh, here, okay. Okay, there, that's Ruby, and you guys may see her a lot, I know. Uh, and me, and that's my cell phone, and Arthur, and Vicky. So, and make sure that, because well, we have so many obligations, but uh, I'm not sorry. Long, long words. I, I, I told you about uh, a lot of the obligations because it's, it's going to affect your bonus, so I want you guys to pay close attention to that. And but, uh, lastly, your annual paid vacation. You have three paid sick days per semester, take work day annually, okay? And now we have a new policy that is for the uh, renewing, for teachers who renew the contract, you will get one more annual leave, okay? Uh, coordinators, hello. Uh, does that policy enforce this year, or does it trace it all back to the beginning of the program? Because we have teachers who've been on the program for quite a long time, right? Do they get just one day starting now, or do they get more than one day? Do you know? Huh? Because this year we have a new policy. Like for the for the teachers who resign the contract, you know, for each year they stay in uh, EV program, they will get one more annual annual leave. 
Does that start this year or? For our school, yes. For Wen Chang, yes. For Wen Chang, it starts this year. Okay. Then you should be the, the policy for. Well, it's okay if you're if you're not so sure yet. You know, if it's a new policy, we'll ask the principal and they try to provide the, the correct answer. Yeah? Your, your question is not very clear. So oh, what is it that starts this year? Uh, you, uh, for teachers who, resign, who, sign, who continue the contract, uh, they will add one more annual leave day. So instead of 10, you get 11. Okay, I was just, I was just asking the coordinators, does that count starting from this year? Or does it trace it all back to the teachers? Like, let's say you stay in this program since 2012. Does that mean you get three days instead of one day? So I was just asking them, you know, whether it starts now or does it trace it back to, you know, so the teachers have stayed in the, con in the program for a long time. Okay. Uh, and uh, and our one hour bank leave per month. And also, you have other uh, Taiwanese national holidays too. Only one hour? Two hours. Two hours? Just two hours. Two hours or one hour? Two hours. It's two. Two, okay. Alright. Sorry. Now. And uh, for new teachers, there's a three-month probationary period starting from the first day of work. A three-month probationary period is observed since, and uh, so the, this is the time when you, uh, when you, uh, when the school gets to know you and see if you are, you know, you what the program uh, needs. And uh, should a teacher be viewed as unfit for the job during the period, the contract will be terminated and every reimbursement will be needed. So that's something that you should know. And so the, the, next, the other one, with respect to parts irrelevant to the dispute, nor effective thereby, both parties shall continue to perform the application unless otherwise agreed by party A. This is because uh, in other programs, there were uh, situations when a teacher became uh, uh, unrational and argued with the school and then just stopped coming to school one day. Okay, and we turned off the cell phone, no email contact, couldn't find that person anywhere. And uh, of course, this is strictly you know, like violating the contract because you know, unless, unless the school agrees, you don't have to come anymore. You cannot just say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to come to school anymore. Okay, because the reason being, because when we found the teacher eventually, she said, oh, you know, I just don't feel like coming, so I don't want to come. But now I do want to come back, you know, so. Yeah, and uh, serious misconduct for serious misconduct like uh, uh, serious some examples I guess like having a, a very uh, big argument with the school or using foul languages with the school or or like you did something that violated the contract. For serious misconduct, as for serious misconduct like that, the school will give you uh, warning letters. They will issue one warning letter, and then they have to wait for a week because they did give you an observation period, and then they will issue another warning letter. If you, there's no improvement, then they'll issue another warning letter. And then another warning letter is issued if the teacher still show no improvement, then they will uh, terminate the contract. So that's the for the serious misconduct. You can uh, there's a part on the contract that says that. And for poor performance, uh, party B must be notified with what problems are because the school cannot say that, uh, oh, we don't we don't want you because we don't think you're good because they have to they have to uh, tell you the problems first and then give you two dem demonstrations, teaching demonstrations it's for you for you to have time to improve. And if there's no improvement, only if there's no improvement, can okay, party A terminate the contract. So you don't have to worry if the school can terminate your contract. Just say give you excuses like, oh, because you don't think you did a good job, or something like that. They have to give you notification first, okay, and time for you to improve. Now, and this part, uh, okay, this is the policy that a school would like to enforce this year for all the teachers, sexual harassment policy in Taiwan, okay? Now, for sexual harassment, now there's a difference in cultures, Asian people, especially females and young you, and your students, might have difficulties with physical contact, such as hugging, cheek kissing, and touching, okay? And uh, and vulgarity, like vulgar jokes and comments should be refrained in the office, especially to the opposite of sex. And uh, 
uh, let's all, we are all professionals, and I know that most, you all, you know, you're professional teachers, you know, and we try to be professional teachers when we're in the office. And uh, so when you're calling your female, you know, colleagues, try not to use words like buttercups, or honey, or sweet peas, okay? Don't, it's really, it happened before. That's why we're saying this, okay, it really happened. So don't think that you can get away with it because maybe you are more elderly or because you are more experienced, okay? That doesn't make it okay just because you are, just because the Asian people respect elderly people doesn't mean they have to take this, okay? Now, so, and uh, a teacher would suffer from sexual harassment of a co-worker can file, okay, this applies for male and female. Male can, you know, get some sexual harassment from the office too. And uh, you can file a complaint to the director of the school CD program, the complaint shall remain anonymous. The school will conduct an investigation, okay, and then uh, take the following steps. Now, this is a simple video. demonstrate was that uh, because it's, uh, it's made by Taiwanese people so there are a lot of the Taiwanese female traits that you might not notice you might not you know get the impression as sexual harassment okay the females do that a lot to to, to guys sometimes okay and they don't realize it too it's a sexual harassment like pinching and poking you know poking I guess some people get that a lot by their female co-workers okay poking you know yeah if you feel that it's bothering you it's sexual harassment and pinching too. Some female teachers like to pitch male teachers' ears or arms or legs. That's also considered a sexual harassment. Okay? And uh, and patting on the on the butt or blocking movement, okay, that's a very common there's a common slang in Japanese for that. <laughs> okay, they think it's a romantic thing to do between male and female, but it's not, okay, in, in the workplace. Okay? Now uh, so those those type of things are considered as sexual harassment, and if you have that kind of problems, uh, don't be afraid to tell your uh, director about it. Okay. Now, and now for our roles. Am I talking too fast? I think I am. Ah. You're talking just fine. <laughs> really? I'm supposed to do this for an hour, but I'm almost finished already. Okay. Uh, our roles. Okay, so this is just to tell you about what the schools, coordinators, uh, and you guys, you know, what, what we do, okay? So coordinators, they are in charge of the academic part of the e program. So if you have any uh, problems regarding to the program, the teaching, the lesson plan, you should uh, discuss with the coordinators. And sometimes they will assist us, you know, when we you know, when we need help, you know, but they're very kind people, okay? Now, and, uh, and uh, what we do is mainly is to help you with the documents, you know, and take care of you guys in Taiwan. So, like, if you have trouble, like, if you are going to somewhere, like an office in Taipei, and you don't know how to get there, you know, because all the maps are in Taiwanese, and you want to help, and we can, you know, help you get a direction from Google, you know, or, or give you detailed direction on how to take the bus, you know, I mean, some people, I think last year somebody asked me how to get to uh, the Fisherman's Wharf in Danshe. And I told him, like, what bus to take, what MRT to take, you know. So, if you need help with that, you know, or if you want to know, like, the popular night markets in Taiwan, okay, or you want to know, like, the, the common price for something, you don't want to be scammed, okay, you can ask us too. And uh, for the schools, they're in charge of the administrative part of the program and they're now, for a teacher's role, you create all English environment to encourage the students to speak. So I know that some teachers are eager to learn the Chinese here in Taiwan. You are okay to practice your Chinese with your co-workers, but it is not okay for you to practice your Chinese with the students. Okay? 
All right, and I don't know if some schools really mind that. Some school might even say, oh, we don't want you to practice your Chinese in your office either. You know, some school might say that. So in that case, I would say respect the school's you know, wishes. You know, and uh, if you need help practicing Chinese, you can, uh, you can call us. We can you know, talk to you in Chinese. And uh, improve the student's overall speaking ability. Incorporate in teaching coaches from their own experience. You know, some teachers who are experienced teachers may, might have done something that's pretty successful in the past, and you're welcome to bring that new techniques or approaches into the program. And work together with your co-teacher before during each class to reach the maximum result. I know that not all state schools have a lot of the co-teaching classes, um, but, uh, but I believe Wednesday is the common day for every school to have the, the co-teaching with your common teacher. Okay? So and we also, we, we also have like a session this afternoon about that part. So maybe you can uh, learn something from our expert. And the school's role, they're employers. They provide any resource that you may need. Uh, I might have said this last year, but I'll say it again. We, in a, the other program, we had a teacher because the school ran, ran out of funds for soap uh, and uh, cleaning fluids. So there, were no, there was no soap on the dish tray in school. So the teacher wrote a complaint letter to the, deal, the, to the Department of Education saying that he should be responsible for all the soap in Taoyuan city schools. It is our fault that we do not provide such things to the school. So, you know, we are, we don't know what to say. Of course, when, deal, when, a, when, a, when, a, when, when they got this kind of letter, they're like, what? You know, they don't understand. You have to call us, you know, to find out what's going on. So they provide any resource that you, you may need, okay? Oh yeah, she also mentioned about trash cans. She said, "Don't know should be in charge of, there should be a trash can for every classroom in school, and don't know should be responsible and paying for that. Yeah, okay. So, and uh, the school also manages the teachers, curriculums, and work schedules. And the coordinators will be supervised both the teachers and the schools and assist Taoyuan city government with other English educa education related matters. <coughs> and for our, our role, we're